And you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 radio show on 92kills.com. And um, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a uh, very, very, very special guest in the building. Um, I don't know how how to introduce her because she's uh kind of like a, a person captivating. Minutes. Like she's she's like me, but the female version. Oh, like shit. that's what I would say. You think I think so too. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself and where she represents and uh the name of her of her show. Okay. Because it's Man Cave Sunday and she's gonna be the uh, female voice on Man Cave Sunday. I think that's gonna be dope. Okay. Are you ready for me? Oh, not really, but we got to <laughs> It don't clean. matter. Okay. Well, hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Jesse Camille. Uh, that always keeps it real, a.k.a. the Pussy Party president of the Pussy Party podcast. Whew. Yes, that's just the first thing that I do. But um, just I consider myself a sex culture revolutionary, um, a renaissance woman out here in the world it of, better be good you know, too. sex. Oh, it is extra wet but anyways um i'm also but are you author. out here changing boys religion because erica badu out here changing people's religion i mean she been on it though and she only doing missionary lies that's what she said that's what she telling you that's what they said it's, it's what you know whatever position she do is missionary work you know what i'm saying missionary explain that I mean, like, you know how, like, someone will go over to, like, Africa and do missionary work? Uh -huh. You know, she, you got to think about it in the bigger context of what it is. She might say huh. she's doing missionary, but it just means that it's just the work they're going of God. to pussy church. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And there's a lot of variations that. of missionary. Is it? Is it? Yeah. I mean, legs open, legs closed, twisted, Indian style. Indian, Indian style. style. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> this is something I new. Have a question. Yeah, I'm here to educate y'all. <laughs> so, uh, no, not just the education. Well, we got yeah. Well, guess the education. So, when you meet a man that had is not that sexually experienced, experienced, mm -hmm. do open. you teach him, or you want somebody that's already that's able to please? I mean, I want somebody that could teach me something what I personally want. But when I meet, I mean, I guess just my energy that I put out. I don't really meet a lot of men that are not some sort of sexual, like have some sort of sexual acumen. But I mean, my life purpose is to teach people to be like Dora the Explorer and Diego of sexuality. So it don't matter what level you are, and I'm probably always going to put you on some new So, new so how do you meet a man that can teach you something if this is like your, your niche? I like mean, I'm group? just, I just, so like I said, I'm the, I'm the president of the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Any president isn't the expert. They aren't the know-all be-all. I'm just the, the face. face and the mouthpiece and the, um, the, the vehicle or whatever. So I have people around me that I connect with that are experts in the field. Now, I do have my area of expertise and things that I know about. That's how I feel. Can we talk about that? Okay. Anyway, yeah. So so what's your area of expertise? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to know. Well, um, so I am a sensual healer. So I am certified in Tantra, which um, basically means moving energy. But it is. That means you ain't touching me. No, I'm touching you. It is um, intentional touch, and it is a way of healing, and it is a way of, like, um, exploring the spiritual and sensual side of sex versus just putting the P in the V. That's, that's, that's how you make babies. I don't want to do that. I mean, you can make babies all kind of ways. I, look, I got three babies, and I, every time I look, all, I look in her eyes. You talking like how a kid who say they don't like broccoli. You don't know what you want. Or you I don't do know, know what, what I like. want. I'm, you don't know. Have you done it before? What? Tantra. Nope. But I, so, I think what he was so, going with it was the make love part of it is how you make So I didn't say make love. I said move energy and, and heal. So I just want you to move. So I love. can, and through Tantra, I can teach you how to um, have an orgasm without ejaculating. Wait, what? Yeah. A man? Yes, a man. You don't want that? Yeah, yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very messy thing. So, I mean, if I, can, if, I can, if I can keep it to myself, I mean, I would. Like, oh. like you know, most men have one-dimensional um, orgasms. Where very true. Where women have, well, there's a table there that's nine orgasms that women have. But men are able to achieve that, too. It's just you've never been taught or been able to explore that level. And so... 
I will move energy in you and unblock certain areas in you where you can connect the energy that's in your, you know, penile area to your gut, to your heart, to your third eye. No, skip the heart. I, you skip the heart, but everything else sounds great. I've never been in this skip tree. The heart. Yeah, what, no. what you been going through? You hurt, baby. What yeah. happened? Who hurt you? <laughs> Who hurt you? Uh, I'm, I'm recently divorced, but we ain't I mean, gonna talk too. about that. It's all good. We ain't gonna talk about that. You um, let you go with all this. You this need some steps. healing. I don't need no healing. Yes, you do. No. <laughs> so how did you end up getting divorced with these nine steps of orgasm? Because if I ever have nine different types of orgasms. If she can breathe on me when I touch me and I say, I'm yeah, not going to it, it is a lot of breathing. So I wasn't doing Tantra when I was married. But oh. he, he lost his mind and, you know, not to put a damper on things, but got physical with me. So I had to leave. Oh, yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. It wasn't. Tr- it, the sex wasn't the issue <laughs> at all. It was yeah. trash? Or was it no, it was. That's why you married. Yeah, Good. for sure. But you know, that's not enough. Yeah, that's true. Well, mm-hmm. no, sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but that's just one area that I am. I would say an expert in. I mean, just in general, um, being open about sex and exploring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that is what I do. And through my tantra practice, I also would consider myself what's called a sensual dom. A what? Like Say a dominatrix. Yes. Like you want to be in charge. Like I am in charge. Like you want to like tie me up and stuff. No. So like I said, it's through the tantric <laughs> practice. So in the tantric practice, I will um, do a form of what I call dominant submission. What is that? Mean? So that means I will be telling you what to do and I will be quote unquote running the show. But people have dom and sub kind of twisted. They think that sub means... You don't got no say and you don't whatever, but really... I definitely got to say because there's some things that I ain't going to allow. Right, and so that's the thing. Before you even do anything together, you have a lot of communication about what's the yeses and the noes and all that stuff. But as the dom, it just means that your experience, I'm responsible for. Mm. So basically, you are just the receiver. All you have to do is sit back, relax, and receive. And I am doing most of the giving or the work or what have you. I want to be tied up, but I'm scared. Yeah, that's part of your healing. You like, no, no, I'm just saying. Like, I, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared too, though. Like, like, like I don't want to give somebody that much control of my life. You're because you don't trust. This that's is true. true. Yes. I don't trust nobody to do nothing to me. So, naked. on a spiritual <laughs> and sexual side, most men are blocked in their root chakra. The root chakra is like at the base, like where you're, where you your dick. Can I say dick? No, no, no but it's too oh, late. Okay. <laughs> your, your penis, uh-huh. yeah. scientific, and like um, your pe- your your perineum, your your gooch area, right? Most men are blocked there, mm-hmm. and that's where Except you feel. Except for light-skinned feel, men. Uh, light-skinned mm-hmm. men. That's why they cry. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that blocked. is that uh, that chakra <laughs> is where you feel safe and secure, uh-huh. and most men. Even though they I get it, are sexually you, you active, they may not feel. But I feel safe, secure, because I know she's not touching that at all. If she touched that, I might punch her. So you ain't never had your gooch touch? No, oh, no. Oh my that's too god! Close. That's why you said that's a safe area. That's not a safe area for me because if you get that, that's too close to my to my butt. So and if I can't see you, don't touch me. <laughs> so. There's a lot of, of unpacking that has to go on there. No, see, you're trying to unpack. But there, but <laughs> there is, I'm telling you, there's a massive amount of pleasure and experience. And I'm not saying to go to your butt. Whatever your nose are, are your nose. Mm-hmm. But for <laughs> it to be a no because of a lack of experience and I think fear in a um, false, whatever, like false. Uh, I don't want to make no news. noises I can't take back. No, I, and I think it's... See, and the who, me, it's it's, a, who cares? I, I do. Think, and men want, don't, don't want to be emasculated. So. <laughs> but it's not about that. emasculation. That's the thing. Y'all got it twisted. Feeling emotions and feeling pleasure is empowering. I felt emotions, and I don't want to feel them no more. So did she... So not did she lick the gooch? I think that's where she's going. She definitely didn't lick my gooch. What about the... Can we say... Yeah. Say balls. Okay. What about the balls? Balls is balls cool. Balls are fine. My thing is, if she really licked the bottom of the ball, she pretty no, much licking the no, top of the No, I know the difference. My butt would have clinched. It would be like, nope. <laughs> I know the difference. Well, and let me tell you this. In my exploration of sexual liberation, I have found that black men have the most vanilla sex. What's vanilla, vanilla what sex? Regular. Oh, I can believe that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and no, I have it. these conversations with Because white men, men don't care. Light-skinned men don't care. I 
I'm going to say they don't care. They're freer. They're freer. Black yeah. men's sexuality is look, look. in a is prison. No, I, I agree with that. We were slaves. That's fine. But I mean, so, like, everybody <laughs> was slaves. so let me ask you a question. You don't think that's the same thing for black women? Uh, so, no. I think that the perception is that our sexuality is imprisoned, and we do get a lot of criticism, but we are actually more sexual beings and explorative than most. I think you're more of a minority than you think. I mean, I'm a unicorn, of course. I like unicorns. But most black women, especially successful black women, there's an image that they are aggressive, they're mean, they can't get a man, they sit at home with their vibrators. And that's not true. Most successful Black women that I know are about that life, especially sexually. They are exploring. They are putting, they getting Erica by doing you and all that stuff. It's just we get portrayed that we are like sexless or have no sexual identity. But then the black man, y'all are portrayed as like these sexual beings and deviants and all that stuff. And you are controlled by sex and you make your decisions by sex. When most, especially successful black men that I know, they really not sexually driven or motivated. They more... Um, task driven and oriented. I know a lot of black men that's in y'all positions that's like, uh, I can have it, I cannot. And what, sex? Yeah. Oh, they oh, gay. No, I can't, I can't. <laughs> no, not that they're gay, but oh, they it's just gay. like, they not living and dying by it like when they were younger. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but but, but most of men, I mean, especially like my age, it, like I started at 13. So like the amount of bodies that you rack up over the years is kind of like, I'm not going like I have some that I'll be like, oh, I should have never touched her. So at 30, I'm not gonna have those. I should have never touched her. Yeah. Right. You, a little more picky. You, you have a little bit more smarts. Got a bougie penis. You know what I'm saying? Bougie <laughs> and bougie penis. Lonely gooch. But anywho, my gooch can stay lonely. He can stay wherever he is. So I don't even want you to find him. <laughs> I mean, we know where he at. It's just no. I don't want you to find have him. Have you I ever don't. done it to a woman? What? Mm-hmm. Lick that gooch? Yeah, I lick but everything. And so that's fine. But to get to a gooch, I, and I know the sounds like that she men, made, and I don't want to chime in, it. please. <laughs> Help me out. He definitely got his gooch lick. Go ahead. My thing is, men and women. No, have no, no, the no, same... no, no, no. Let, let him explain about his gooch licking. My gooch has not been lit. Go ahead, this pussy party president. So. Oh, see, look. So it hasn't been. Are you totally against it? It has not been, and I am totally against it. Why Let's... are you totally against <laughs> it? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> You know, I think it is. I think it's the fear of uh, that noise. I'm telling you, it's the noise that I you might you make think, that you can't you take back. About. Yeah, you don't I, about it. you might like it. No, no, no. I'm not worried about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Like I think I think the box is that you might like it. But that's what I'm saying. But it's and how so you enjoy. So what do you it. think it'll happen if you like it? You like it. You like it. What does but that mean? But that's what I'm saying. It's how you enjoy it. Is that's everybody the licking gooch? Like that's yeah. what I'm saying. All women are licking gooch. Uh, most women are are. Why ain't nobody lick my gooch? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so look, we gonna put a pin in the gooch licking. We're going to play a song, and we're going to come back and figure out why she manifesting Gooch Leaking on our show. Oh, I manifest uh, way more than that, but. Oh, um, it's May K Sunday. I love it. Like it's 22. Uh, we have the president of the uh, Coochie Cops, and we're going to go and go into like a, a mix. That sounds like a segment. Right. Uh, sex right mix you give with us. Because <laughs> it is the MySpace. Man, I miss MySpace. Let's bring that back. I miss MySpace, too. I know too. Tom, like. Oh, I'm trying to figure we was on because he ain't telling we was on. We just talking. Of course, he never does because he's a gooch. Uh oh. But I guess that's a good thing. That's what we learned in it. Yeah. Made for pleasure. All right, so we uh we asked you off air um with all of this knowledge and all mm-hmm. of this uh great things that you can do. Why are you sing? Because <laughs> I want to be. But no, to really answer that is one. If I'm being real, I'm a commitment phobe right now. Because I was married, and How long? for like uh, about four years, oh, together for almost seven. No, no, I was pre-married. Yeah, I was just getting in too. I mean, yeah, but we were together for seven years. That's pretty much a long time. Yeah, I mean, we was married technically. I would say in the eyes of God, way before we said I do. So, anyways, I'm a commitment phobe, so I'm still kind of like getting a grip on the idea of committing to somebody again. And then two, um, I was. Does that scare you? Does it scare me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It scares me. Does it scare you based on time or actual feelings? It scares me based on time. So I don't trust that I'm gonna make a good decision on a partner that will be good in five and ten years. That's what I'm scared of. That's why I'm good. That's good and what? Good and what? And what? what so. Uh, I mean, basically what went wrong with my situation, you know, I dealt with abuse or whatever, 
and I had the whole dream, the whole American dream. So it wasn't like I had a bad marriage. I had a great marriage. If anyone goes on the podcast, I talk about it all the time. Right. Um, and then I think people get divorced for two reasons. Either they, it was wrong and it been wrong and they finally doing something about it. Or it's like Hurricane Katrina, like something just comes through one day and changes the dynamic of your relationship forever, you know? And maybe you were in uh, ignorant bliss before and now you see and then you just, things are not the same. And mine was the second part. It wasn't like, man, we knew this wasn't right and we right. finally doing it. it something was kinda, just happened. Right. So that's one reason why I'm not, why I'm single is because I'm still healing from getting divorced. And then on the other side of that, what I've realized is since my relationship career, 14 years old, was when I had my first boyfriend. She I called have, it a relationship career. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. I have never not been in a relationship. I have always Me had too. a boyfriend, husband, five booze, something, and I've never been by myself. And so realizing Being that, by yourself scares you? Um, it doesn't scare me. It's just something I never did. Yeah. And so now I have made a conscious decision to be by myself for a little while. And you guys have caught me on day three of celibacy. How do you go advocate? Wait, wait, wait. So, okay. Oh, day this... three. So, you, I mean, you just left him alone. Like I, ju- I said the full moon. That just happened on the... Okay, so... Know what no full moon is? Oh, y'all need to. Why? Why would you know what full moon is? Well, because it kind of gives you a little bit more, like, consciousness of what's going on in the energy around you. See the light skin, no. Look, he tried to act like he know. He just be ad libbing on what you say. That's and he it. on the first date too. So. It's <laughs> <laughs> your first date. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he didn't do nothing, right? I got some questions. <laughs> but yeah, nothing, right? so that's why I'm single. Brian was a better first date than he was. <laughs> I hate um, But yeah, so that's why I'm single because I'm choosing to be in a relationship by myself for a little bit. So why celibacy? So why celibacy? Because I was just going to not be in a relationship with anybody, but I, I'm a pleasure whore. Can I say whore? You already said it. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, you, you say the word, you say, can I say I know. It's there. I didn't think about it until afterwards how much profanity I say. But anyways, um, so basically for me, I um, operate on a pleasure complex. If it pleases me, then I do it. If it, it doesn't, then I don't. It's like my goddess complex. Um, and I realized that um, when I have sex, I really, the kind of sex I have and how I do it, I don't do it unless I have a connection with you. So I'm loving on you in some kind of way. So we in some form of relationship. Facts. So I could not get the, I'm not going to be in a relationship with anybody right now without giving up the penis. Mm. Or pussy. So I mean, celibacy or means until you like go back into a relationship, it seems like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm like waiting till marriage. That's, I'm not that type. I right. didn't say that. But just right now, I'm... Loving yeah. on myself, and when when the spirit say I'm loving on myself, I'm good. Too, a lot. Then I'm I'm good. Then I'll go into it. But so celibacy means like no masturbation. Oh no, I, I will, but I'm not a big self pleasure. I know how, and I do, but it's lonely. I mean, it is lonely after the nut. I feel like <laughs> so I, I went I went vegan. Like, I'm I went disgusted vegan with like myself five months ago, and I feel like when I first went vegan, like when you go out, you'd be like, oh yeah, then went. Oh dang! I can't have no. Oh, meat. you vegan too? Uh, well, I'm vegetarian now. And but, you burn sage? Oh, I definitely do all of that and Paula Ooh. Santana. And they be having that good too, fam. That's yeah. That's why she she could talk like this because she burns sage and she vegan. I do way more than that, but yes. All right, so you got a book called Manifesting. It's called Thirty Ways to Start Manifesting. Thirty Thank ways to start manifesting. Yes. So okay. I have the the podcast is like my sexual secular baby. And then I have another business called Manifest Tea, where I make spiritually blended teas and baths. I, I'm a tarot reader. I'm an um, energy reader. And that's my spiritual baby. You was raised your mama and your daddy? Yep, they've been married 33 years. Of course. Man. Of course. <laughs> this, this, you can only do this when you got two parents. How your parents feel about this? They know? Oh, yeah. My dad was the first person I asked about this. I asked what? I asked about the podcast. I was like, what do you think about this? I have this idea. And I told him the name. I told him, like, my first 40 episodes. And he was like, it's a great idea. Do it and don't change for nobody. So I got a question. Yes. With uh, your parents being married for 33 years, uh-huh. were you scared of divorce? Yes. Because, you know, like. You I've didn't re- seem thick and thin. You know what working through it looked like. But like I said, I had an abuse situation. Right. And my mama, loco, right? And if she ain't never getting nothing, hit nothing, I know I 
pressured and didn't deserve it. So my, when I told my parents, my dad was like, okay, so who did I raise? And I was like, he raised a spiritual gangster. And he was like, okay. And so, you know, I had my family support, so it made it a little easier. And it wasn't that I didn't know. You got no brothers? I have a younger brother and sister. I'm the oldest. They like eight and ten years younger than me. Mm. So, yeah. Wait till you get older. What you mean, wait? Uh, you oh, say, just wait till you get older. Just okay. I, 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 don't worry, I'll wait. So, you want to go back to the book? Yeah, back to the book. Okay, so 30 Ways to, so 30 ways to Start Manifesting. Yeah was a book that I made. Um, it's a journaling style book for, let's say you are going to get sage, you feel called to get some crystals or something. You have a spiritual awakening. You feel like you're an empath, you feel like you may be a healer or just have some kind of personal gift. Um, you usually go to a store, you get some sage or something, and then it's like, now what? And so when I went through that, um, I was I didn't have a tribe, I didn't have anything, especially as black women, we don't really have a spiritual, like, community we're all out in our own islands so i made this book for the person who is on that spiritual awakening to kind of know what like those top things that you need to be aware of as far as energy as far as utilizing um the moon the days of the week um how to do healing baths all that stuff um in that book and it's very simple laid out and you can write you know i give you instructions on how to uh, manifest how to create your sacred space. Here, let me see. Because you were just saying, you said black women. Yes. Um, I feel like it's a space for black men, too. Because I've always wanted to know about this, too. But I don't know how to get started. Where do I? I'm good. You get started here. I'm a good. I'm good. You get started here. Yeah, I'll just be picking up, like, random rocks. You all the way, baby, I'm good. I mean, I'm not a big crystal person. I'm an herbalist. So, uh, like oh, I said, I have, a tea, I have a tea business. Mind your business. <laughs> um, oh, he's my queen. So, mine started with herbs or whatever. Not really the crystals. So, like, you know, your um, spearmints and your peppermints and your roses and your hibiscus, all those things um, have spiritual and holistic properties. And once I learned about that, I took classes and got educated. And it So, you putting, like, another. special stuff in tea? Yes. That's why you say you're a unicorn. I don't want to drink your tea. That's not why I say I'm a unicorn. That's just another thing on my repertoire. You gonna have How do you feel about polygamy? Um, I mean, I'm a poly. Really? Polygamy, I mean, yes, because I am a woman who predominant. I'm, I'm penis dom- dominant, but I like women too. So polygamy probably would work for me. So would but, you join a couple? Um, yeah, being a unicorn is like one of the best positions ever. Mm. So why? Because you get all, you get double loved, Facts. and you get a man that's trained already. When you're a unicorn, what do you mean trained? So he, so <laughs> if you're married or in a relationship, the other woman, the girlfriend or the wife, Train. they've already, you know, basically taught the man how to um, treat them. So you're getting a man that's already coming to you with that like husband, fiance, you know, boyfriend energy versus the getting to know you courting energy. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And then you get double loved by a woman. And it's kind of like all the enjoyment and not all the responsibility if it's just for fun. But in a relationship, I mean, it it goes deep. So I had, when I was married, we had a girlfriend. So I experienced it. Yeah. We're looking for a girlfriend now. Who is we? Me and my fiance. Okay. Um, Tinder. Okay. Cupid. Man, all that stuff don't work. It does. Man, I'm going to tell you. Don't want to talk about this. Look, let, let me go, look, let me I, don't, off the I don't know. Okay, so why 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 do you have two different names? Because right here it says Jesse Camille. Yes. Right. And then on your book it says Jessica McBride. Why do you feel like it's necessary to separate the two? Well, um, Jessica McBride is like my legal name, and as an author, like that's what I put out there on my book. But um, Jesse Camille is um, a lot more catchy. I feel, <laughs> and. Um, it just kind of goes along with um, everything I do with, like, the podcast and everything. Jesse Camille always keeps it real. It rhymes, you know. That's my thing. I don't I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> so you want to talk about this panty dropper? Because I want to know what this is. Sure. On to the next. Okay, panty dropper. So um, panty dropper is a – okay, let me take it back. I, y'all told y'all I'm an herbalist and all these things. So I am very consciously aware of the healing properties of – herbs and are very conscious of the healing properties of sex and so I put them together and panty dropper is a CBD infused clitoral stimulation serum now men can use it as well because the head of the penis is derived from the same place as the clitoris and um, basically what it does is the CBD 
it um what do you call it? connects to two erogenous zones that you have the um and it basically brings blood flow to the area. And then I have some other herbs in there that stimulate and give a tingling and cooling sensation to the clitoris area. So it's good for self-pleasure, but my favorite is using it when you're eating the monkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It tastes very clean and clear and a little minty. It's vegan. It's like menthol. Uh, That's why I was asking the menthol in it for the cooling sensation. No, it's not, it's like not menthol. No. Like it'll smell it like is like that. Pepper- <laughs> I got my jam on. I don't want to play the instrumental. You're going to hear this for the rest of the show. Y'all like this? Okay, so y'all ready to get jumped in? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So on my show, when you become a guest, I ask a few questions to jump you into the pussy party. All right. So I would like to know from Light Skin over there, you going first. What do you <laughs> love the most about pussy? The warmth. The warmth. Oh, like on your hands? Oh, my on... dick. Oh, oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You know better. <laughs> See, and you know, I know that you mean that because you spit it out real quick. Sometimes it takes men a while to figure out what they love the most. Okay, what about you, Me? light-skinned lady? What do you love the most about your pussy? Whoa. Uh, I love how wet I get. I know, that's right. She said she got that Aquafina. Okay. What about you? I love the int- intricacy of pussy. I what love, you yeah, I, I love that they're all different. I love to explore. I like to see what makes a woman jump. Mm-hmm. I, I love the taste of vagina. Okay. I just love vagina as a whole, period. Okay. Now I'm going to switch the question because too That's many times it's asked. Okay, so if you woke up in the morning mm-hmm. and you had a pussy, uh-huh. What is the first thing you would do? I'm giving it. <laughs> <laughs> your turn, your turn, your turn, your turn, your turn. You can have it. You oh, want oh it? Come stab it. You can have it. Yeah, I was just on the saying, if a man was able to be a woman for a day, <laughs> you can have it. Take it, please. So. Even if it hurt, Drew? I, it ain't going to hurt. So my thing is, I do hear men say that. Uh-huh. Or they say the other thing. I wouldn't give it to nobody. I would keep it private or whatever, whatever. Uh, because yeah. they're just not thinking about satisfaction. They're thinking about right. them being a man getting penetrated. So, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about satisfaction. You, you out. So yeah. you want to feel the vaginal orgasm in many different levels. So why? No. <laughs> yeah, it can kind of be funny. Yes. No, 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 so, they, re- they respond differently than we do. So I know like their, their orgasm is not the same as my orgasm. Right. So I would want to see it. Right. So what would you do after you had that tr- that many 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 different experiences when someone calls you a whore? I might want to keep it. I might want to keep it. Like, what like, do you say? Get in line. Like, do I get to keep like a decision if I want to keep it or not? It. I, you. You didn't listen to the question. Okay. Go I ahead. said, what would you do after all of those experiences when society calls you a whore? Oh, I don't care. I'm a. They call me a whore now. <laughs> yeah, but that's almost like a badge of honor for men. Yeah, you it's know, a badge of women. honor for women. Look, I got a best friend who by the count just has mine, and she don't care. Well, yes, I mean there is a lot of slut I, claiming now. I feel you know like what I'm I, saying? so. I feel like your sexual experiences are yours. Like, well, if you if you let that that word become empowering to you, then it is what it is. Like that, but that's that's any word. You know what I mean? Like I could get upset if somebody called me the N word. If they call me. You know what I mean? Like, so if you call me a whore, that's cool. Like, I'm right. getting mine. You lonely. That's cool. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. That was my question to you. Being okay. uh, somebody who talks about sex a lot, how do you deal with the stigmatism of this being or being a woman talking about sex and men looking at you a certain type of way? Honestly, no, men don't look at me bad. Men be looking at me like, yeah, that's what's up. Like, so I really, so do I really don't get slut shamed. Do you find more women bad than you than men? Yes. And that. not necessarily bash. Well, I did have one experience because I um, won this bathing suit and it was a one piece and it said power right where the cootie cat is. And I took a picture. It's on my Instagram and I'm sitting on this rock and my legs are open so you can see the words. And my friend posted it on his like travel page because I was in Guatemala and all these women came for me like, oh, you must not have no brains. You got to do that. And you need men and you need this. And no, vagina is. So what you should have did was got another bathing suit that had power, but you should have had a black fist next to it like this. Well, I'm not doing nothing to make the women happy because they're not happy with themselves. And really what I find is that not that they 
shame me, but they shame themselves. They feel like, oh, like, oh my God. Like I talked to a girl today who's going to be on my show. And um, I t could tell I had to like make her feel at ease about Say, like just yeah. being open and saying it or whatever, and Them so. Women that have boring sex and don't nobody want. Well, yeah, mm, yeah. It, that's relative term, but um, really, I find that they are just uncomfortable because of shame that they've gotten, right. and you know, we are the biggest, I think, ones that are hard on ourselves as the women about being sexually free versus the men, because y'all are sexually free. So I think that there's a part of y'all that get it and know that the game is BS and appreciate having a woman who is sexually open because you know you're probably more prone to get your so dick you up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's cool. That's amazing. But our, <laughs> oh, yeah. man, I threw my whole question out. Um, <laughs> uh, do you run into, across men who are intimidated, like, intimidated by you? Uh, yeah, I do. Half of them probably wouldn't admit it, but I can smell it. What does it smell like? It's bond number nine. What does it smell like? Um, it smells like um, when she take take them pants off. Of your inferiority. <sighs> yeah, for sure. And I mean, the thing is, I think real men put vagina, pussy, whatever on a pedestal and do recognize it as this superior thing. It is. And when they do, then. Like things are better for them versus the ones that try to compete with us, and usually they end up failing. But it's not even a compete thing. It, for me, like it would be a thing of going into this sexual experience and not knowing if I can please you or not mm -hmm. because of how um, how experienced you that are. Right, right, that and and and, and that's the thing of you having an insecurity on how you can satisfy me. It has nothing to do with me. Uh huh. It, it doesn't. Because <laughs> if you got it, you got it. A man that ain't never had sex before can have great dick game. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how experienced you are. It matters on the person. You know what I'm saying? And I probably well, will teach you something. What if he got all the something. confidence in the world and he's still trash? It's a lot of them, too. I mean, at least, I, I, at like least that I, I, my thing is at least he was confident enough to go for it. Usually the men that got it, um, I, don't, I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't even get hit on that much. To be honest. Because you know they saying? scared. I'm telling you why. That's fine. And so someone told me that because I'm so open and I'm so the same with everybody, that it makes me not trustworthy. That they don't trust that what they're going to get from me is, like, special or only to them or what right. have you. And I say, you know, get over it. But then you had a summon in Look, like, ain't I nothing really new under too. the sun. Everything is Nah, it's new stuff under the sun, fam. I, nope, I don't think nothing. it's new because. Nothing new. Nah, if she, she just told me it's women licking Gucci's. And this women is a new for me. Gucci's. That's not new. I'm not saying it's, not, it's new for that's me. What I, that's, that's what I said. So there's nothing new under the sun. Right, Everything is new. Because licking Gucci is like how eating Cootie Cat used to be. Your back grandma in the day. was licking Gucci. Men was lying Bro. saying they wasn't doing it and they was doing it. Your grandma, look, look. My great grandmother had thirteen kids. I know she was going above and beyond. She probably. But you don't know what kind of sex she was having. You don't think the sex was different back then? I think sex has always been nasty. I think. I think that for I men. I think we were open with it. I think that men have been getting the same kind of sex since forever. Some women have, but now women are demanding orgasms and demanding pleasure. So women may be having a different dynamic of sex or whatever. Maybe not my parents, but like my grandparents, like my grandmother. Yeah, I probably have different sex than her, but we both, like, I come from a long line of freaks, so I'm sure that I get I it know. from my mama and my mama's mama and my mama's mama's mama. If I'm I asked real. my grandmother, did she give head? And she said, I had four husbands. What you think? Ooh. So I was like, that, Ooh. no. Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't think about it like uh, that. Yes. But I do, I mean, I don't think that it's different. Just like how people talk about, like, homosexuality. You're like, oh, my gosh, these people just going crazy with it. Nah, Gay people have been around since forever. It's just now there's information and access, so you just know about it more. Just you like see porn. It more. But ain't nothing changed. It ain't nothing changed. It's I just was just telling access. somebody that, uh, like, like young men are more are easier to say that like they masturbate now. Because when me growing up, we could masturbate was like, oh my gosh, you beat your meat, like, ugh. But now, right. like my nephew, like, bro, y'all go straight to Pornhub. It ain't no problem. Like, right. And I feel bad for men because y'all have y'all have a lot of trauma and performance anxiety around. Right. Your, your your penis, period. Like, if you, you know don't why. jack off, it's a problem. If you do jack off, it's a problem. If you getting cootie cat at a young age, like, it's cool. And if you're not, then it's a problem. And it's just like, even
even I found that men who like have sexual experiences for the first time, usually they are like kind of coming with like this emotion and this care. And the woman's like, what you doing? Just, just screw me. Right. And it kind of like twists the reality from like a young boy to like just go at it from a physical aspect. Most young boys mess and with not, a, not yeah. with a chick that they want to mess with for a first time. Right, or somebody way older. Yeah, that. way older. All right, so that's the end I'll show y'all. Yeah, um, we got it. We got to close what it What time is it? Got time. Uh, time flew when you, yeah. you know. You know, um, so oh, no. let, <laughs> let them know where they can find you on social media before we get out of here. So, yes, you can find me on Instagram at Pussy Party Podcast, and that's spelled P-W-U-S-S-Y, Party Podcast. Or you can go on my website, www.thepussypartypodcast.com. And if you want to get some panty dropper, go to pantydropperoil.com. And the book is on Amazon, 30 Ways to Start Manifesting. Check it out. All right, well, this has been a very uh, good show. Um, I think this is... I just... Been eyes opening and legs opening. What's crazy is I just posted, like, my top five interviews of Catch 22. I think this is the one I've been most intrigued by. Oh, yeah! Um, Facts. So, um, we're going to close out with uh, Brian and Ray. Y'all going to come play with me on my podcast? Yes, yes, yes. I don't play. <laughs> uh, I miss uh, first grade because I ain't like recess, girl. I don't play. Uh, okay, so no, I'm about no. to get out of here. It's 10 22. You're going to do what I say. Okay. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 Radio Show on 92kills.com. Hey, what's up, y'all? It is Jesse Camille, a.k.a. the Pussy Party President of the Pussy Party Podcast. I just did a dope interview with Catch-22 Radio. Y'all check me out on Instagram at Pussy Party Podcast or online, www.thepussypartypodcast.com. And y'all can check me out going live on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. See you there. Mm-hmm.